This time I've got a JVC turntable up on the workbench. This is one of mine that was given to me a while back. Doesn't work? Well, it needs a belt for starters. It needs a cartridge for a second because the needle's broken. I'm going to give this away. I'm going to give it a service first and make sure everything's working before I give it away and whoever gets it, because I'm giving it away, they'll have to buy a belt for it and get a stylus or a cartridge for it, but then they'll have Actually, not a bad little turntable. Let's check it out. This time I've got a JVC turntable. This was given to me. This one's a ALA151. Don't know anything about it, so let's just check it out. Seems to have a problem. This is a belt drive turntable. Let's check and see how the belt is. Oh, there is no belt. Well, that would explain why it's not working. All right, so I need to find a belt for this. Since this is not a turntable I'm intending to keep, I'm not going to go and buy a belt for it because I likely won't get the money out of the belt. I got another one I've got up for sale, and I'm trying to I'm trying to sell it. Everyone thinks these turntables are worth a lot of money, but when push comes to shove, people don't want to spend any money on them, and uh, when the belts cost. $20 or more a piece, $30 for a belt, I can hardly justify investing that knowing that I won't get more than that for the unit. So I've got a belt that I robbed out of one of my other turntables just for testing. So we'll just put the belt around. They're pretty easy to do. Anybody can do this. We'll check this out for speed, maybe lubricate it, etc. See how it sounds. Let's put the belt around there. Grab the belt and pull it around the. the uh... Let me get the belt so I can at least grab it. Grab the belt with your fingers and then just put the belt around the uh, motor. That should make this thing spin, which it does. We'll check the speed out, maybe adjust the speed on here and um, go from there see how it sounds cartridge probably needs a needle too more than likely so check the speed out I'll use my little RPM gauge built into my phone RPM and speed okay it's set for 33 that's looking pretty good actually start where are we here I gotta hit, I gotta stop it. Start, okay, and that's to start your turntable. So now it's going to measure the speed. So we have a wow of plus and minus 0.28 percent which is not bad respectable for a, a cheap turntable like this we'll try the 45 rpm speed now we'll just uh, hit start and start the turntable up oh why is it going 45 well I guess we gotta fix that it's not changing speed it's still even though I've switched it to 45 it's still running at 33 so I guess we need to fix that and then uh, I can, I'll probably just give this one away, you know, because I, I'm not going to, obviously not going to put a belt on unless I can get my money out of it, and I think it needs a cartridge or a needle anyway, because uh, it looks like the needle on here is pretty much non-existent. I'll try, it's a T4P type system, so I'll try a cartridge from my other turntable, and we'll see how it sounds, because it's just a plug-in cartridge. These ones here, you just undo a screw. And the cartridge just unplugs like that. And the indeed the stylus is broken. Whether an uh, original stylus for this is available or not, probably not. But Audio Technica makes some pretty good cartridges which don't cost an arm and a leg. In fact, this is an Audio Technica cartridge. Now mine's a little different. Mine's actually a Signet cartridge. And it's not a bad little cartridge. But the nice thing about the uh, 
T4P is that you can just, well, they just unplug, so you can swap cartridges in, you know, at, at will because they just plug in just like that. And I know some of the audio snoobs out there, you know who you are. I'm not even going to bother putting that screw in right now. This is just temporary. But uh, audio snoobs will say, oh, the T4P was junk. And actually, the T4P was a brilliant design. And had vinyl not fallen out of favor as quick as it did in the early 80s when this, the compact disc took over, everything was going to T4P. The snoobs might not agree, but engineering wins on this front. You see, one of the biggest headaches when you are installing a cartridge on a head shell is getting the overhang and the alignment correct. So you'll see people with their protractors and their gauges out there to measure everything. And they're fiddle farting around trying to get the actual stylus, get the diamond in exactly the right spot for the correct angle for the lowest possible distortion. And the T4P design eliminates all of that because it was engineered to be exact and to have the absolute best arc and the best tracking next to a linear tracking turntable. This gives the conventional arm the, the closest you are going to get to a linear tracking turntable. Engineering one in this one. Had the vinyl record not gone into such a downward spiral that it did when the compact disc basically killed vinyl and, and vinyl was dead for years right vinyl was completely dead nobody made turntables nobody made cartridges nobody made replacement stylus for a number of years there might have been a few companies out there that were just kind of hanging on by a thread but really they weren't making any money they were just servicing the equipment that was still out there that people were using because nobody was selling new turntables and many companies that made high-end cartridges went broke but every company whether it be Ortofon or Stanton or any of those high-end companies uh, Empire, Audio-Technica they all signed on for the T4P system it was, it was an industry-wide standard that every manufacturer agreed on for new turntables and there were some very high-end cartridges including uh, some moving coil cartridges, Techniques had a, a moving coil cartridge out. Um, high end, very high end, and the sound quality off them was just fantastic. This all ended, of course, when turntables went out of production. And a lot of cartridge manufacturers just dropped them. They've come back to a certain degree. This one is not an old Designet, which I believe is an Audio Technic, it's an AM10P. Um, this is not an old cartridge. This is relatively new. I've only had it a couple years. This is off my Technics SLM1. And um, I mean, it's a, it's a good sounding cartridge. There's nothing wrong with this. I'm sure, sure there are better sounding cartridges, but this one here sounds good enough for me for the amount that I use that turntable. And it wasn't all that expensive. So there is T4P cartridges available now not to the same degree as was available a few years ago but there are certainly respectable cartridges available so I'm gonna play a record on here and we're gonna take a listen to this and then I'm gonna put this cartridge back on my other turntable and we'll fix the speed problem so that I can remove the belt and give this turntable table away because I won't get anything for it needing a cartridge even if I put a put that belt on it I'm not going to get any money for it because it needs a cartridge. So I might as well just give it to someone who, you know, and tell them it needs a belt, it needs a cartridge. Here's a free turntable. It's a good turntable. It's working. I've tested it. The speed is correct. And all you need to do is buy a belt, buy a cartridge, head on down to Innovative or whoever you want to buy it from or go online, pick yourself up a basic T4P cartridge and a belt for this unit, and you are good to go. So let me hook this up to the system. We'll take a listen to the sound and then we'll fix the uh, speed problem for 45. Good 
cleaning, that's for sure. A lot of wear. That's the problem with vinyl is when it's played a lot of wears. there when I touched it. I don't think this side of the record has been played as much. Interesting. It just lifts. It just lifts it and stops. Or is that something else that's broken? Maybe there's something else that's broken. I'm gonna have to fix. fix that too I guess because it looks like the automatic stop is not working correctly but we know the turntable works it plays um, it plays the correct speed so now I'm just going to remove my cartridge and we'll dig into this and see why the mechanism is not working and of course fix the speed for 45. This unit of course is going to be uh, servo controlled so let's just pull that platter off again and we need to obviously under there anyway because uh, Mechanically, it didn't uh, pick the record up, so we'll just pull the platter off and uh, just try running this thing through its paces. When you hit the reject, well, two things should happen. This little this little lever gets moved over in place. Also, when the arm is when the arm moves over, it should automatically pick it up at the end of the record, which it does. It should pick it up and move it back, and it doesn't. It's just staying in the same place which is uh, a problem. It should lift up the record. When I hit this lever, this lever clicks over that little, that little trigger lever there. It should pick up and this should move back, but it's not moving the arm back. Now it might be because it's sticking on this. I think the, uh, I think the, I think the cueing arm is probably set a little too high. Looks like this might be a little bit set up a little bit too high. That might do it. Okay, let's just try it now. Oh, it's still not moving. Okay, well, there's something, something in the bottom here is not uh, working properly because this should pick the pick the record up and it should move it back, but it's like it's sticking to this this arm here. See it? Oh, it's this. It's this. It's, this is going too high. You see that? It does move it. It's just these this. This cueing arm is going way too high and it's jamming it, so I wonder if we can lower that down just a little bit more. That might be the problem there, it just... The uh, cueing arm was set a little bit high. Let's just see how this is. I don't have a needle on here, so I don't have to worry. Or correction, I don't have a stylus on. I put the original cartridge back on, which has got no cartridge on it, or go no no stylus on it. I just want to check check to see if this is going to lift up high enough. I guess it's not lifting high enough now to lift the record, so we'll just uh, we'll just adjust this up a bit.
That's a bit better. So I make sure that it's it's that it's high enough. Part of the problem is this rubber here has gotten it's deteriorating. Like like you know like belts go all greasy and idlers go all greasy. This is getting really really sticky. So when it's turned up too high, it actually sticks to the bottom of the um, of the arm and the arm can't move. I'm just going to try cleaning it off a bit and see whether that will make it slide a little easier. I noticed that when I bring up the tone arm it's quite sticky and I should be able to push this a little easier than that but what's happened is the rubber here is just deteriorating on here. So I'm just going to try cleaning that up a bit. I'll just use some isopropyl alcohol We'll just clean up the top of this and get the get the sticky residue off of it so that the uh, the arm can slip a little easier on it because it's pretty sticky. Okay, now let's see how it is now. Not quite as stiff as it was. We'll just see how this works over here. If I flip it over, it picks up. There we go. Gee, I wonder why it's sticking. There's a piece of tape sticking off the bottom of that uh, tone arm. The uh, glue from it is uh, exposed. Uh, that might be why it's sticking. What do you think? You see it on the bottom? I think it's like a, it was probably a slip pad, but it's come off and the glue is exposed. It's getting gummy again. I may have to actually pull this. I may, I may have to remove the rubber. All right, I think I got it now. If I move the tone arm over, so it picks up. It returns. So I think that part's okay. Now we just need to deal with the speed issue probably going to be the switch because I think it's just there's just a switch here that switches between two different resistors and um, reset that oh might help if I put the belt back on right something about that making it work Okay. The switch should switch it to 45, but it's not. Oh, see, it's just a switch that's bad. Because when I wiggle the switch around, it, it did speed up there momentarily. So I think it's just the, it's just the switch here is bad. So we'll, we'll clean the switch. See whether that uh, fixes that problem. This thing's already got a few scratches on it, so I don't want to help it and get any more, so we'll just throw it. We'll throw that on there. Oh, there's adjustments down here for the speed too, you see? We can we can actually accurately calibrate this. Alright, so this is a uh, controlled just with a simple switch. How does that look for simple? It doesn't even have a contact for the 33 RPM. It just just closes the switch for 45 and it just obviously just adds a resistor. So we'll just spray some cleaner in here. This is just some neutral that I'm going to spray in. And we'll activate the switch multiple times. Clean up the contacts and this should make it work. This is a I guess a dual speed motor. I'll show you the motor. It's uh, motor is uh, Matsushita. Was made on 14th of March 1988. It's called it's an MMI 6T2RWP 12 volts DC. Those two speed adjustments actually go to two separate controls. 
on board on the motor. So that should get this clean enough, I think. We'll just try it. I'll put it together. Try it. But here's the motor. The two holes on the bottom of the, the cabinet are going to correspond with the two adjustments right there on the motor. So it is a small servo motor and all the switch does is just close a, a switch, close a contact here on the motor. So it's got the normal four, four pads in here. But instead of uh, like a, a double cassette deck would have the resistor external, this one it's internal and it just switches it on, switches to the second one. Which basically is probably just going to add another variable resistor in addition to the first one. I would think that you set the speed for 33 and then you adjust your 45 speed because if you adjust the 33 it might affect the 45. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know how it's wired. But that's uh, that's about as simple as it gets. Let's just make sure that it works now. Alright, so we'll, uh, we'll start this up here. It says start my turntable. I'll put it into 45 RPM mode. Of course it's going to operate the mechanism to try, I'm sure, and stop it. There we go, yeah, of course it is. Forty five point four one. So um it's uh Wow and Flutter is two point nine four percent. Wow, that's pretty bad. I know why. It's because this was uh the mechanism was trying to push the arm back. I must have something stuck in here when I turned it over. You just double check everything. Or it's because it's sitting on the rubber mat instead of the base. That might be it. Now that's what it is. It needs to be it, it, sitting on the rubber mat. The mat is actually holding it up here. So we'll just start this up again here. And let it measure. So that's a little better. Our wow and flutter is a 0 0.69 percent, 45.51 RPM, a little bit fast, 1.13 percent fast. Again, we can tweak that. We put the bottom on it now that at least we know the switch is working. I'll put the bottom on the unit, and then uh, we can try just setting the speed, get it at least correct with this belt that's on here. Oops. Got the screwdriver stuck in the bottom now. Adjust the speed. 45 speed adjustment. My screwdriver must be touching the case when I'm putting it in here. And that's why I adjust it down just a bit. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get it. Yeah, I think we're right on. We're we're close enough. This is I say this is a free giveaway turntable. So if someone wants it more accurate, they can fiddle fart around with it themselves once they put their own belt on. This is the right belt that's on here because it's off a similar model turntable. Anyway, um, there we go. It's uh, calibrated. 
everything seems to be working on it now including the end of record pickup so I'm happy it's done thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye